Hey guys, today I'm showing you tips for how to pack your RV fridge and freezer. Oh, I'm having a whole lot of fun. freezer to talk a little bit about how we pack food on the road and that's kind of important because we realize that even though where we live there's like a Walmart or a grocery store just like five ten miles away oftentimes on the road we get in places where literally the next grocery store is over a hundred miles away mm -hmm. um, there is a story in which we were in Big Bend National Park and we went and asked somebody for some lunch meat at their grocery store and they told us that they thought they might have some by spring break <laughs> And it was February. It was February. And so our eyes kind of got a little big. <laughs> and actually, at, uh, at that one place, we um, ended up having to make a 100-mile trip to go to the grocery store because we were totally not prepared. So we do a few things now a little bit differently after having traveled for about six months last year. We kind of learned some of the ropes. So one of the very first things I did when I started packing our camper fridge and freezer was thinking through about what do I need to keep on hand for what we need to eat now? And then how can I make sure that we don't have to make a hundred mile trip to go get the necessities or get something to make for dinner? Because if they don't have lunch meat, oftentimes there aren't very many restaurants either. <laughs> so, so, and did I mention my crew gets grumpy when they don't eat? So we have to make sure that we take care of them. So first and foremost, my biggest trick that I do is I utilize my camper freezer in a very, very big way. So what I do is I make sure my camper freezer is especially full of meats that I can thaw in. Can I pop over here? My kernel. <laughs> so if we um, keep frozen chicken thighs down here um, so that I can at any point in time grab a bag of this and if I'm using the foodie or the instant pot, an electric pressure cooker, I can actually just throw them frozen into the instant pot or a foodie. Um, or if I want to thaw it to grill, then I can just put water in here and put um, the bag of chicken in there and let it set for a few minutes and start to thaw it. And I can change out the water um, until the chicken fully thaws and is able for us to toss on our grill. So that's a really awesome tip right there. Underneath the chicken is for, you know, those really special occasions. Which is when mama needs those barbecue of ribs. So I usually get the ribs and lay them flat in the bottom here so I can pile stuff on top of them. Um, so that's what we do down there. Um, then over here, I'm pretty sure when they designed this, they were thinking this was for orange juice or something. I'm not sure what they thought, but I looked at this and said, Hmm, sausage and hamburger, <laughs> ground beef. Um, so what I do is I, I try to be very careful when I'm putting these in. A lot of times I'll throw them in here first so they'll freeze hard because you don't want them to freeze to the shape of this or they'll get stuck. So I want them to just be able to slide in and out of there frozen. So there's that. And then this is my bacon drawer where I keep frozen bacon. Again, I pop in the morning I can pop the bacon into the kernel um, and start thawing it while I'm cooking other things for breakfast and then um, it can be fully thawed if we don't have bacon thawed. I also sometimes when I see we're low down in the fridge I'll just grab one of these and toss you'll see I have a meat drawer dedicated to this kind of thing so it can start thawing in the fridge. Then up here are the key veggies. I like to keep a lot of veggies um, 
either in frozen or canned form because sometimes fresh isn't an option and sometimes you get into situations in which um, like when we went to California where they don't want you to have certain fresh um, fruits and vegetables so I like to keep frozen options it just makes it easier for us to kind of decide what to do on the fly so we have in here frozen broccoli we have our zoodles that we love with the zucchini and then we have rice cauliflower those are those are our key veggies because we like our low carb veggies so there we go there's that oops I just sure I didn't knock something there we go then down here um, we have all kinds of things going on like I mentioned um, in a previous video I love these black uh, these plastic shoe boxes I use them in the fridge so that stuff does not if you just put things on the shelf in this fridge and you drive down the road you're gonna have a hot mess whenever you finally stop all those eggs down there will be yeah. scrambled yeah so what I like to do is also use them to help keep certain kinds of foods away from other foods so like raw meats I like to keep away from um, like our lunch meat and that kind of thing so I have a tray that has thawed out bacon already in it in here if I get a roast or something like that that we're going to cook and it's not going to go um, in the freezer to freeze for later it will go in here we'll keep all the raw meats in the raw meat container and the other awesome thing about these plastic containers is stuff like eggs and those kinds of things or package things you can actually use the container to make things stackable so that otherwise you would just have things moving around so I can set the eggs down gently and put the meat a container above it and it saves on space um, I have the same thing going on up here with fresh veggies that need to be refrigerated they are all in my veggie tray which I try to keep up and away from the raw meat um, got a head of cabbage there then I have the um, another kind of snack um, container that's got cheeses in it. It's got some fresh berries that we'll, we'll be using to make pancakes with. But again, I'm using that stackable method. Now, this isn't a shoe box, but this is another one of those kind of same concept. It's a clear container I already had at home. So I just, and it was smaller, so it would fit in there too. Um, and so I have, uh, we like to shred our own cheese. So I have a big old block of cheese that I can shred up later that I'm just can put under there and then slide this over the top um so then i have our lunch meat drawer that has all the different kinds of lunch meats and that kind of stuff so they're easily accessible while we're on the road and then this is just more cheeses and different kinds of things um, that we cook with like that and then our we've got our butter and all that kind of stuff that can neatly fit right here and Mikey's pepperoni seasoning. We cannot travel without pepperoni <laughs> So we've got that so we can make Mississippi everythings while we're on mm -hmm. the road. <laughs> but that is that is a tour of how we pack food. The other thing we do is we try to keep um, another um, plastic container for fresh fruits and vegetables that we're using to cook. So this has got avocados and limes in it right now because we're going to be having some guacamole. Um, and then this can easily fit in one of our cabinets when we're traveling and then when we're not traveling, it's popped out and on the counter so we can easily grab it. But that is my handful of tips I gave you there for how we pack our RV fridge and freezer to make sure that we're not stranded without food on the road. <laughs> if you like this video, we'd love for you to give us a thumbs up. Um, if you are not already a member of the Crock Posse, we'd love for you to become a part of our slow cooking family by clicking subscribe down below. And if you would like to be notified every time we upload a travel video and a slow cooking video, um, who knows what we'll be doing video. Um, just click the dingling down below. That's the bell. Um, but whatever you do, we hope you laugh often, eat good food, and speak life. Bye, guys.
If you want to see the latest, click on the left right here. If you feel like subscribing, click on the right, my dear. And if you think we're funny, enough to send us money, click the Patreon link below. And